One of the undisputed pioneers of modern electronic music here in South Africa. That is a heavily weighted association that continues to follow the career of today's special guest, and that is Ryan Murgatroyd. For those who are unaware, the Johannesburg based producer and songwriter has been working in music for over 20 years, also taking on roles which go beyond the creation of music, such as being the director of education at Soul Candy Institute and being a label founder with the inception of Swoon Recordings in 2019. Merck's really broke into the scene during the late 2000s thanks to the mass appeal of Crazy White Boy, an electronic duo formed by himself and close collaborator Kostakis. Ah, I hope I didn't say that like a total doist. A couple of years later, he had the intention of starting a new project, a project that is steeped with deep emotion and accompanied by an underground electronic aesthetic. And then, against the opinion of many of his peers, he went solo. Throughout the years, he's created some of the most enchanting African-influenced deep house and electronica to come out of our country. In this video, you're about to witness Ryan Megatroy break down the five albums that have most impacted his artistry. If you'd like to know more about the South African music scene and our beloved artist, please do hit that subscribe button and YouTube is going to recommend you videos that are much similar to this if you are enjoying what you're currently watching. You know what? Let's get into it. Okay, number five, bit of a strange one. I went through this stage in my early adolescence where I was super into like really whiny rock music, which by the way, I cannot stand right now. Like Linkin Park, get the fuck out of here, okay? But I went through the stage where I was listening to Skunk and Nancy, and I, I just think Skin is one of the coolest vocalists ever. I think that album, um, Stush, was one of the coolest rock albums ever written. And I, I think still there's this little legacy of like that rock music songwriting, like bridge, chorus, verse that was like so good from that era. And I, I still find myself um, trying to integrate just a little hint of it into like my electronic music game. So that's my number five. All right, so number four, gotta be probably Daft Punk, Defunk. I know Around the World is like their biggest anthem, but there was something about Defunk. This is the first time I ever heard like a TV 303, like, cause I was never into Acid House, Chicago House. So like, what was that? That was like 1996. Daft Punk had this like, bum, 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 bum. And it was like a proper TV 303 with glides and stuff. And I was just like fucking obsessed straight away. Um, that completely ended my last um, love affair with emo rock. That was like the, the last. From that record onward, I was like full on electronic music for forever. And I still think about the fact that like electronic music's lost that funk. I think of, of all the things that have happened, the musicality's gotten better, the production's gotten better, instruments are superior to what they were there, but like the one thing that hasn't come back is that, is that funkiness. I really love like funky techno, funky house, funky everything, so I think um, that's been a huge influence on me still, yeah. All right, number three, an old progressive record called The Sky is Pink by James Holden. There was this really golden era of like progressive house, like almost like God's Kitchen, Cream Fields. I must have been finishing school, so like early 2000s. You know, I still have this love for like really good, uplifting, progressive music. That's not, it's not cheesy, it's not contrived, it's not like trancey and EDM-y. Um, and I think that that record was unique because like if you go listen to melodic techno now, like on Beatport, you'll see how much it got influenced by that initial James Holden work. So I think like that was like a preface to all these sounds like Township Rebellion and Stefan Bodson, all these all these guys that are really big now in melodic techno. I feel like they all borrowed a little bit from that James Holden sound. It's still a great record, still very playable, and was like from an era of just great, great progressive music that I haven't heard since since then. So yeah, that's my number three. Okay, so number two, like it's almost a bit of a cliche because I think this record has influenced so many people. It'd be on a lot of these lists. Um, but I, I mean, obviously it did really influence me, so I wanted it on here, and that's, um, the, the record is Cirrus by Bonobo of the album. I forgot the goddamn album. Um, yeah, of the album North Borders. And, um, I think like at the time I was working with those sorts of instruments, like marimbas and kalimbas, it's just like 
incredible elegant simplicity in that record. And I still listen to it today, just thinking like, this is such a goddamn good record, it's so simple. So, so I think that record influenced me like, I mean, Simon, I, I met him when he played here at Bonoba, and I think he's a phenomenal human being and artist, but, and all his work's great, but there's just something about that record. I think it's one of his seminal works, even though I like to always say an artist's most underground work is their seminal work, and that's one of his popular, but um, I, I just love it, it's a great record. So that's my number two. All right, number one. So this is a bit of a cheat because it's, it's technically doesn't really belong on an album. Um, it's more of a performance and um, it's Niels Fram's opening concert for the Boiler Room Dimensions. You can only find it on YouTube. It's like a one hour, 15 minute performance, but specifically between the, the minutes of 19 minutes and 24 minutes. I swear to God, it is the most sublime piece of music I think ever written, one of the best compositions. I've never been able to watch without crying my eyes out, nor has anyone else that I've showed it to, and if you can, you have no soul, no soul, okay? When he plays it, he's like dripping sweat. He, he looks like he's completely checked out of his body into like a parallel universe. It's such a complex piece of music that I don't think you could play it if you were thinking. It's like slow deep, he's so deep in flow state, you can clearly see like, this is a being that is just channeling pure musical savantness. So it's, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I think Niels Fram is the greatest living composer on earth right now. And I think that's probably one of, one of my favorite works of his. Um, and the piece that I would like, if there's ever a piece that I get to remix or redo or reinterpret or sort of compose, um, re recompose for an orchestra would definitely be that piece. If you have heard a wide range of Ryan's works, something that is very consistent is the emotional depth that is embedded in many of the tracks. And if you actually go check out some of these albums, you'll notice that these albums also have a very similar sort of emotional depth to them, particularly North Borders. If you haven't heard North Borders by Bonobo, I would highly suggest you go listen to that as soon as you're done watching this. And then go check out the Neil's From. <laughs> We've left all the links to the album below in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Peace. Thank you. Yeah. That was Thank you so much. Lovely, thank you dude, I really enjoyed that, that was a lot of fun.